I am very excited about tonight. I really am because it's something that I believe every one of us will take a lot of aha moments from our guest speaker tonight who traveled all the way via Z Z O O M Zoom <laughs> Zoom and I'm going well within the chat you would notice that I have shared his bio because his bio is lengthy so I'm only going to just highlight a few of the bio of our special guest this evening. Clay, Clay Gunman Mathimbu is an integrated adversity preparedness coach, founder and CEO of Impucu Co. I M P U C U K O Projects Limited, as well as managing director of Pan African Commission of Trade and Development. He has served at Toastmasters International as both an area director 2020-2021 and executive director for the KZN region in 2021-2020 for 2021-2022. And that is also in he's where South Africa. He is a member of the South Africa District 74 Toastmasters. He has a consulting engineering background and completed his MBA in 2017. While working with major consultant engineering firms like MERS and McLillan, Mutt McDonald, IGODA projects, and many more, he had an opportunity to analyze different companies' performance. And tonight, visiting Toastmasters, Welcome Toastmasters, home Toastmasters, sorry, guests. I would love for you, just unmute your mic and give a round of applause, or should I say Antiguan applause or Caribbean applause, or should I say give that world applause because we have different places, different persons from various um, parts of the globe here tonight. Give a round of welcome to our special guest, Clay Gladman Mathimbo. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Francois, Toastmaster Francois. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just loving the whole entire meeting from the time we got in and more especially when you were introducing me because I was listening to a different accent. It's so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've just made me to feel really, really, really welcome. And good evening. It's good morning on my end. It's already uh, quarter to one in the morning. <laughs> and good evening to all the Antigua Toastmaster members. Well, it's going to be a good evening. Are we all looking forward to it? Just to shake our brains a little bit. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, we <laughs> One are. One of the reasons why just, just a question I decided. Before we start. Kule, how yeah. would you like your time to be noted? Your 45 minutes. Uh, you can give me the indication at around about 25 minutes past. 25 past. Okay, great. 25 minutes past. It will be 25 minutes past seven on your end. Yes. You can start giving me the indication at that time. But hopefully we, we, we will be done by that time. Uh, we're, not, we're not going too deep. <laughs> right. Okay, one of the reasons why I decided to look at the topic analytical thinking was when I read about the fact that I'm sure most of you may have heard of this if you're hearing this for the first time. That's what the research shows, that we can go for three weeks without eating, we can go for three days without water, and three minutes without oxygen, but we can't even spend three seconds, I mean, three seconds without thinking. Imagine, that's what Dr. Caroline Leaf has researched for us. I just want you to type on the chat box, please, what are your expectations? for today 
just type on the chat box. And maybe some of you, if you want to call out whatever your expectations are, let's hear you. I love the questions that came earlier. Thank you so much to Toastmaster Monefe. And there's also another question that came in from Toastmaster Ribawone. Uh, apologies on my pronunciation. That's what I was laughing about the whole entire time. <laughs> that I'm hearing a different pronunciation and I'm sure you also are hearing something so strange on the other side. But thank you so much for the questions that you pose. How do we recognize I need to think analytically. How do you recognize that? It's a powerful question. And another one, if I remember correctly, it was about how do we strike the balance between analytical thinking and emotional intelligence? I'm seeing the questions. Let's see on the chat. I'm expecting, I'm trying to get my chats going this side. All right, I'm expecting to understand how to really think beyond Shoreline, wow, beautiful. Anyone else? Anyone else that wants to talk to me before I start? You don't have to raise the hand, just unmute and go ahead. Must we always think critically? Must we always think critically? I will have to note that one. Anyone else? Right, beautiful questions. Well, the analytical thinking is all about the mind management. All this question you might realize as we go along that it's all about the mind management. Your thoughts don't have a way to go out except through your emotions, behaviors, and into your body. Let's repeat that. Your thoughts don't have any, any other way to go out except through your emotions, behaviors, and your body. Sometimes if we didn't see it on the emotions, what you're thinking about or what is bugging you or in your behavior, we will see you getting sick or we'll see your body reacting in a particular way. So, if we talk about analytical thinking and solving problems, we indeed are talking about thinking. Remember the, the opening phrase or the opening quotation that was saying, we can't even spend three seconds without thinking. That's what it is. That means constantly. We're gonna unpack how does that happen as part of our opening. I want you to, <clears throat> I, I want to look at the relationship between mind and the thoughts. I just want us to look at that. Well, mind is how you think, feel, and choose. I know most of the times we've had people mistaken it with the brain. Mind is simply how you think, feel, and choose. It's not your brain but brain receives this energy from your mind. And with that energy, your brain, because it's connected to your body, it will begin to do certain things. However, the mind is simply how you think, feel, and choose. There are three divisions of the mind. There is a conscious mind, and it's regarded as the slowest part of the mind where conscious actions take place. Things like what we're doing now, we're interacting, but that's the smallest component. You may think it's the biggest component, it's the smallest component compared to what the non-conscious mind is having or it, it, it has got. So the non-conscious mind <clears throat> is our biggest part and the fastest part where all our experiences, memories, and beliefs are stored good or bad, doesn't matter whether you're believing in good things and what you, you're always telling yourself negative things or good things, it all stays on the non-conscious mind. And that's the biggest and the fastest part. Isn't that strange? That the fastest part is the one that we even can't see because at least we can relate with what we are doing while we're conscious like this. 
And there is also a subconscious mind, which is mainly the information highway between the two. I just want you to get a picture. The conscious will be at the top, the non-conscious will be at the bottom. I'm not saying it's like that. I just want to, to give you a visual image. Then the information highway is the subconscious mind, which gets to connect the two. When we are not on a neuroscience class, but it is important to at least appreciate how our minds function. Because once you understand how your mind functions, then you can manipulate certain things. You can do what we call mind management. A thought is the end product of the mind. In other words, a thought is a real thing that occupies a mental real estate. I'm sure you've seen where you are, you may be having a building and that building is occupying a physical real estate, doesn't it? So the thought is a thing that occupies the mental real estate. So that means that there is a real estate, but something needs to occupy that, that would be a thought. And there is billions and billions and whatever measure of thoughts that will be going on with each person. That thought propels us into some form of action. Out of a particular thought, then we begin to act. We're here together. We've done such a lot of things. We were hearing good speeches. We were hearing nice table topics. <clears throat> thought is propelling that particular action. I want you to picture a tree now. When you look at this tree, the origin story will be like the roots underground. I just will block myself for a minute so that you can see what we're talking about. We get the origin story, which is underground. Sometimes we have forgotten even about that origin story. Then as we go along, we get our perspectives. Just a moment, I don't know what's happening here. I want to make sure that you can see everything that we're doing. Right, here's my drawing. At the bottom, we're getting the origin story, which is underground. And when we look at the stem, we're getting our perspective. Remember that perspectives is the way we view things, is our viewpoint. We can also say it is that three-dimensional image by which you approach life. Our memories that show up as particular behavior are like branches at the top, as you can see, and our emotions are like leaves. So it is easy to identify a person's emotion, behavior, and sometimes even their perspectives. It's easy to see that. But when it comes to the origin story of why are they viewing life like that, it may be difficult. It needs some therapy, it needs some interviews, it needs a whole lot of things. But it's easy to see the emotions, it's easy to see the behavior of a person. So let me summarize what I've just spoken to you about so far. A thought is a product of the mind and it is built into your brain by your mind. Let's say it again. A thought is a product of a mind and it is built into your brain by your mind. Mind by itself is how you think, feel, and choose. As you think, feel, and choose, you build thoughts with memories into your brain. Brain, which is a physical item now, responds to your mind. You change your brain with your mind. You send that energy into your brain using your mind. Mind is always active. That's what we've been discussing so far. As we go along the journey of life, life does present lessons in the form of failures sometimes, obstacles and impossibilities, maybe even losses. But if you persevere and apply analytical thinking, get the correct assistance of how to do that, you will always succeed 
and also develop your skills to repeat your success. In other words, by that I mean, you will be like a person that succeed by design. Do you understand that? Anyone that wouldn't like to repeat their successes in life, anyone that is so determined that they want to fail continuously, anybody? Generally, there is no one that will want to say they want to fail, but the exercise of the analytical thinking is the one that can assist us in that. There's a huge difference when you succeed by design versus when you succeed by chance. There's a huge difference, think about it. The difference is that you always repeat your exact success. If you succeed by design, you can repeat the exact success or even better. It doesn't matter, sometimes you may go down. Life is not always structured the way we want, but you always find a way of bouncing back because you are the person that can use the analytical thinking skills. Is there anyone that doesn't want to repeat their success? As we've said, people generally want to succeed. I just would like you to think of the time when you had really, really serious issues in your life. Because people that do not face obstacles, people that are generally not doing anything, and it isn't like that. So think about that time, taking it from way back. How did you respond? Did you decide that you will give up or you want to kill yourself? or you decided that you will get back up? Was there any assistance before you to help you come back and face your challenges? Most of the times we find that we are sabotaging ourselves. That's what we do because we don't want to apply analytical thinking. I just want to give you a quick story because I'm a Toastmaster. We love telling stories in Toastmasters. In my situation, it was a business failure experience, which was at first a major inconvenience for me, but it taught me the reputability of my success. Toastmaster Fran Francois did mention I have a background in mechanical engineering, but prior to that, I was involved in photography and also in music. That's what I, I did before. Well, after tertiary, I joined the consulting engineering firm. We started doing a lot of projects and we were auditing quite a number of organizations around Southern Africa. And as we were looking at different organizations because we are managing the different projects, I observed different successes of other businesses and different failures of other businesses. In my field, we generally embrace challenges. Once something is a little bit challenging, we love it because it assures us that there will be food on the table. Sometime back then, I also started my own business and I got some work. There is one specific project. A client called me and gave me a 12 month project. It was a nice, interesting power line deviation project. I, I deal with overhead transmission line, the power lines. So that was very, very interesting piece of work in my field then because of its complications and the experience that we were going to come out of it. We got ready to start. However, as we were about to start, after I've mobilized the team and everyone, we got the news that, okay, the client has hired someone else in our space. Then I thought, you know what, let me forget about this. Two months before the cutoff time, remember the initial time was 12 months, two months before the cutoff time, I got another call from the same client saying, hey, Mr. Mtembo, can you come and assist us? We are in trouble now. Well, so it's a very long story, but we eventually said, okay, we will help out. When we got there, everything that can possibly go wrong had gone wrong. Foundations were all over the show, things were just going wrong. Then I began to analyze this client, but I wasn't doing a thorough analysis. I noticed a few things. Postponing the finalization of our deal. He didn't sound excited about his work at all and always had some deadline issues that are so urgent. I looked at that. 
but I ignored it. He also kept on mentioning that he had uh, less work because of his contracts are no longer being extended. Remember, that's an opportunity for me to apply my analytical thinking, but I'm not. And the third thing that I can remember, he was losing staff from his organization. Nice warnings, but I didn't do anything about that. We fast forward the story. We eventually signed the contract. We continued with the work and everything went well. As we were doing the final touch-ups, remember to do a 12 months project in two months means you mobilize everything that you can ever mobilize and get it on that particular project. As we're doing the final touch-ups, we got news that he's liquidate, liquidating and we were never paid a cent on that. So the whole entire investment, or not all perhaps, but major part of it went into that and we are not getting paid now. I had good intention of growing my business when I took that job. Now, I've seen many people get deeper into problems while trying to solve their problems. Why? Because they don't do these things. They don't watch symptoms of inefficiency. In other words, they don't want to think deep. Can you see that the issue of thinking deep is very, very important. Sometimes they fail to invest in themselves through analytical thinking causes or leadership programs, or sometimes they take the first step of development and quit somewhere along the way. As I went through the Toastmasters journey, because at that time, things were really, really bad. I eventually thought, okay, maybe to take my mind out, let me also find this Toastmasters club that I can join. As I went through and I reflected on my life, I learned that individuals and businesses operate at different performance levels. Ideally, what we want to do when we enter business, when we enter business world, whether you're a profession or what, we want to achieve the maximum performance over the shortest time possible. Okay, just a moment, I was sorting out some glitches here. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> right, whenever we want, you can see that house at the top. That's the level of success that we want through this desert mountainous area. But we want to get there over the shortest time possible. Don't we want to do that? Right. We want to make more money as we get to the top. We want to be influential. We want to have a cool brand reputation. Though this is a beautiful, beautiful desire, but life happens. Life happens, whether you're an analytical thinker or not an analytical thinker, life will happen. So we end up finding different challenges. Well, this is due to our differences in performances. The truth is that our actual performance levels are not the same from person to person and from business to business. Some people or some organizations, they will operate at what I call no performance level at all. It doesn't mean that they are not doing anything, but it just means whatever that they're doing, we are not seeing anything out of that. And some operate at what I will call dormancy level. This means these businesses are just idling we're seeing just an idol. At this level, you see things like how they procrastinate on activities and tasks or have workers with no excitement, just like my fellow client that I had seen. Some will operate at what I call a remarkable level. This means these businesses are exceptional at what they do and are always turning in an outstanding performance. You will notice things like operations being delivered on time, staff are always disciplined, 
start having a good understanding of accounting terms and the business operation principles. Those are guys that are operating at what I call a remarkable level. And some businesses operate at a level that we call supreme level. Okay, at the supreme level, that means all the processes are in place. They have all functional tools, are doing things correctly, and are always making smart purchasing decisions. With these guys, everything is just amazing. Don't we all wish to operate at this level at some point? I wish. I mean, at that time, when I was down there, I wish I could operate at this supreme level after I was analyzing my way. Now, let me ask you a question. You just need to think about it internally. Do you relate with any of these performance levels? Either no performance, dormancy, remarkable or supreme. I don't want to know which position are you at right now. All I want you to think about is to at least identify yourself and see in whatever that you do, where do you find your performance level at? Now, let me tell you something. All these businesses still face what I call adversity wall. It doesn't matter what level they're at, they still fa face adversity. With your peak performance, you are not exempted from facing any adversity. This wall will generally prevent you from reaching your desired level of success over the shortest time possible. If you look at the chat box right now, I've just pasted uh, some link there because I can foresee that we will not discuss everything and finish. Take some time and fill in the information there so that we can get in touch and get deeper into the analytical thinking as we go along. It's a huge topic. Okay. Please get me correctly about these people that I'm talking about. We are not questioning the performance quality. Sometimes, and actually most of the times, people do very, very well in doing things. I always make an example with my country where I'm at. We've got plenty of hard skills. We've got plenty of skills that are coming from the university or from whatever institutions. That's not a question. But are you able to break the adversity wall through the use of your mind, through structuring things differently every time you face a challenge? The only issue of concern here is the adversity wall that will generally stop you. Start off position to break that adversity wall lying is the control of our minds, which means mind management. Analytical thinking over those troubling situations will help you. Please remember something here. Most of the businesses and professionals that we respect, you can think of any, they are solving problems. There is a particular problem that they are solving and in turn or in return of that, they are making money or a particular being becomes respected because they are able to solve a specific problem and they are earning money out of that. I've got a question for you then now, right now. How efficient are you at your service? Just think about what you do. How efficient are you at that service? Are you solving the problems the best way you possibly can? Are you an applying analytical thinking in general? But we live in a knowledge-based society. And the more analytical you think, the better your knowledge will be. Like I said earlier on in the video, analytical thinking provides you with the skills to analyze and evaluate information so that you are able to obtain the greatest amount of knowledge from that information. It also can provide the best chance of making correct decisions 
and minimizes the damages if mistakes does okay. Analytical thinking will lead to being more rational and a disciplined thinker. And it will reduce your prejudice and bias, which will provide you a better understanding of your environment. Well, what I would like us to look at, though we wouldn't look at it now, analytical thinking topic is so big. I would want us to maybe understand different components of analytical thinking and use logical thinking, recognize what it means to be more analytical thinker and evaluate information, identify the benefits of analytical thinking, maybe even touch on the problem solving using analytical thinking. Generally, those are the topics that I would want us to look at. But I'm thinking that for today, because of the vastness of analytical thinking, I will only spend the remaining 10 minutes looking at only the components of analytical thinking. And I'm trusting that I will be invited again to touch on other topics. And I'm trusting that you will also be following me through that link that I've given you and see the different talks that I do at different places with regards to analytical thinking. Analytical thinking is related to the study of logic. As we say, analytical thinking relates to how we make decisions and use our judgment. Analytical thinking is more than just thinking about thinking or metacognition. It's also about how we take action. Remember, we did say at the beginning that the mind thinks, feels, and chooses. So analytical thinking is about how we take action as well. Analytical thinking involves many components and we will address a number of unique components in this session. Different components that we, we could look at as of now will be applying reason, open-mindedness, analysis, and logic. Just keep those in mind. There are more, but we're just gonna look at these ones. You can jot down some notes, wherever you want to, because we will be going very, very fast on it. The ability to reason is often considered one of the characteristic marks of being human. An individual's ability to reason well is an analytical thinking skill. Many of the definitions of analytical thinking tend to focus on the ability to reason. Now, when we're talking of reasoning, reasoning occurs when we use our knowledge of one thing, process or statement to determine if another thing, process or statement is true. When we apply reasoning, we use logic to determine what follows what. Human reasoning, we know that it never always follows logic. Sometimes there is the emotional bias that takes place. Now, when we look at reasoning, reasoning has many forms, but I just want us to touch on two forms that we can look at, which is inductive and deductive. By deductive reasoning is when we use our prior knowledge or premises to infer a valid conclusion. While with inductive reasoning, we gather data and make observations that lead to a hypothesis, which we'll later test, but we just gather something and form a particular hypothesis. Right, I just want us to look at this inductive and deductive using the examples as well. We just said the is inductive. Okay, here we said we use observations 
to lead to a particular conclusion. So there's an observ observation, mind my spelling, but it will lead to a particular conclusion. If I were to give you an example, if you pull a penny, say from my pocket, I pull a penny, something comes out from that pocket and immediately conclude that all coins that are in this pocket are pennies, that's inductive. I didn't need to think so hard. I just grabbed one thing and I concluded that everything that will be coming from this pocket is a penny that's inductive. In your mind, I just want you to think of some examples of when were you using the inductive thinking. You just looked at one thing and you just confirmed, okay, that's what it is. While we get the deductive thinking, in deductive thinking, okay, in deductive thinking, we use stated premises to infer a valid reason or a valid conclusion. Let me give you an example. It's easier if we define it using an example again. We know, or maybe there is a statement that says every person in this world is mortal. Therefore, we can say Joel is also mortal because it comes from a generic statement that we know that everyone is mortal. Therefore, Joel is also mortal. Let's have some talk time. Let's have some talk time. I've been talking. Just give me some examples of inductive and deductive that comes into mind. Deductive, we're using a particular fact that will eventually now encompasses everyone or everything else. But in inductive, it's just one thing. And we go with that and we say, everything is honky-dory. Everything follows that. Anyone, anyone that can think of any reason, put on a chat. Or anyone talk to me? Are we still there? We're here. There is one, <laughs> one in the chat. There is um, DTM Mark posted in the chat. Oh, it is cloudy to rain. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so which one is, is that uh, mark? Is that inductive or deductive? Inductive, yes. Anyone else? Okay, right. We, we're going to go ahead because we only have about 10 minutes and let's see. There is another one, another form, which is called syllogism. In syllogism, you use two or more premises to derive a valid conclusion. A good example is fire produces smoke. We all know that fire produces smoke. So when I see that there is a smoke coming out of the house, I will immediately think there is a fire in the house. I haven't seen the fire, but because I know that fire produces a smoke, whenever I see that smoke coming out, mm, there must be fire. Obviously all these type of analysis, they are used in different places. There's no one occurrence that will say, maybe you just use that alone and it works for everything, no. But us as analytical thinkers, we always need to know which tool to use where. There's others like linear ordering. There's also the probability, or you get the if or then statements. You know, I like the Excel, it does use the if, if function. Uh, you program it such that when you do this, this result will come out. Are we still together so far? Okay, I see the comment here say deductive. He went hiking. He is limping. He fell. 
Okay, I love that. At least we are activated to start thinking. So by yourself, think which one have you been using? What type of a thinker have you been? Whatever you are. Have you been using syllogism? Have you been using inductive? Have you been using deductive? And start thinking about what are the benefits of using any over the other. Right, let's move on. Another component that we have is what we call open-mindedness. I'm trying to get back to my slides. Yes, open-mindedness, which is the virtue by which we all learn. In particular, being open-minded means taking into account relevant evidence or arguments to revise a current understanding. It means being critically open to alternatives, willing to think about other possibilities even after having formed an opinion and not allowing preconceived notions or constraint or information to inhibit you or constrain your understanding once there's a new presented information. Open-mindedness is a central theme of education. When we are going to learn, open-mindedness is very, very important. We do get another one, which is analytical analysis. In analytical thinking, the step of analysis helps us to discriminate and access information. As you know, learning occurs in three domains. There is cognitive, which is the mind, and there is affective, which has to do with the feelings, and there is a psychomotor, which relates to motor actions. In cognitive domain, analysis involves the process of discriminating or separating. It gives us the ability to break down the complexity of any item or idea and allows us to gain a better understanding. That's how we learn. The nice one that I like, which is logic and reasoning are similar actually, but they're not the same. Logic is a branch of philosophy that gives the rules for deriving a valid conclusion. A conclusion is valid if it follows a particular statement that is generally accepted. If I say one plus one, you will tell me two because that's a logic that is widely known all around. Factual statements are called premises. When reasoning does not follow the rules, we say it is illogical. I want us to take a moment now with the last five minutes. I've got some que questions that I've prepared for you. They're covering what we discussed. So I will request, <laughs> Mark, don't, don't crucify yourself. This is a session <laughs> for us to be reflecting. <laughs> I'm seeing Mark on, on, the, on the chat there. Zoom Master, if maybe we can take three minutes on a breakout because I want us to wrap up as we come back so that we out by strictly half past that I promised. I'm trying to attach the questions. If you can just bear with me. I'm thinking if we have six breakout rooms, that will help us a lot. And answer these questions. I think okay. that's it for me. Can I hear some feedback from one or two? Anything that you liked about the session? Anything that you gained? Yes, yeah. I, found, I found it very informative. And my one question to you, when you're considering analytical thinking, should you be doing it by yourself? Because I feel like then perhaps you're just listening to your own reasoning. 
I know some mm -hmm. persons, they find that it's easier to make sense of what is happening if they talk it out loud with someone else. What are your thoughts on that? Thank you. And thanks for your presentation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there are different scenarios on that. Personally, sometimes I want to be by myself, but sometimes I want to bounce whatever that I've been thinking with someone else. So there's a little bit of a brainstorm session taking place. So I don't know, it's, it's on the preference of that person. Sometimes I really, really want to be by myself and analyze things, but I don't think every situation will be solved or I will be able to get through every situation if I'm just by myself all the time. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think I will hand back to Toastmaster Francois. Thank you so much, everybody. And continue to keep in touch. We will be talking. Thank you so much. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, distinguished Toastmaster. Kuchle. Thank you. You definitely gave us a prolific presentation on how to use analytical thinking. Some of the key takeaways for me, and I'm sure others will be taking these away too, are that we can succeed by design using analytical thinking. That deep thinking helps to alert us to potential problems. And we can use analytical thinking to break the adversity war. Antigua Toastmasters Club appreciates you journeying from South Africa at this hour of the evening. Well, it's morning for you now, it's after, it's after one for you now. So we really appreciate you taking the time, especially at this hour, to come and share your knowledge with us. So on behalf of the Antigua Tours Masters Club, I present you with this certificate of appreciation. Thank you very much. Back over to you, Madam Tours Masters. Thank you so much, our area director, Cindy Price. Thank you for giving our guest, Kule, his certificate of appreciation and just a few words you'd like to say to us. Wow, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm so speechless. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> so now I've got something to show that, yeah, visiting clubs, visiting Antigua, you get something. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining with I see us. someone is asking me to say my name is Kuse. <laughs> Kuse. <laughs> I, I tried. I'm still practicing it while I'm... So, yes. You've heard okay. it correctly. The symbol. Kuse. <laughs> yes, the symbol. And you can follow him on social media. He's on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and also on Facebook. And he shares a lot of tips as well, too, on analytical thinking. And uh, it's, he posted his link in the chat. You do click on it, fill out the information that you can also stay in touch because uh, one of our professors who is in the meeting we were in the same group and what she said to me she wished something of this nature is taught in the schools um, and this is a professor with a with a, with letters behind her name and it really hits me like wow this is how important your presentation really mean because we need to think beyond, as I said, the shoreline. We really, what we're doing, we definitely have to put it into practice. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs>